First of all, can I ask you what your background is and how old you are? So oh. I'm 30. Uh, I've been, I have a master's in math. Before we continue with today's video, guys, I want to highlight today's sponsor, and that is me. I built this platform called GetCrack.io, and I did it because I noticed that there was a really large gap between what candidates need to know in terms of the knowledge-related questions and what candidates know, which is effectively only lead code. Now that companies are moving away from lead code, this is going to be the platform that you want to invest a lot of your time in. There's a bunch of different topics ranging from language knowledge, operating systems, networking, design patterns, concurrency, etc., and you can really test and hone your skill set here. So if you're competitive, you want to see how well you know Python or C++ or operating systems, this is a platform for you. So make sure to check it out. Uh, I've been working as a software engineer at uh, a company doing REST programming. I uh, also do some C++ and Python. Okay, and how many years of C++ experience do you have? Like three. Okay, and what would you say, what percent of your time are you are you writing C++ in those three years? Uh, so mostly I use Rust at my job, but uh, maybe like 20% C++. Okay. I've used StringView. Uh, okay. I mean, it's... So let's talk about StringView. What is it? If you've used it, what is it? So it basically is a way to pass a string to another function without a copy. Uh, so you could also pass by reference, but the string view is, I guess, a little bit lighter. And so what, what's a string view made out of? If you so it's basically made of pointer, right? A pointer it's and? It's basically, and uh, the length, maybe? Yeah, the length. And is a string view owning? Uh, no, it's not owning. Okay. And what's similar to a string view that was introduced in C++ 20? Sometimes string views are... These sorts of views are called other things sometimes. And I'll give you in to touch with an S. Uh, I'm not sure. Is it Cause a the, sequence? A pointer. There's a very, very well-known term for a pointer. Oh, followed, shared pointer, right? No, no, let, let me ask the question first. There's a very, there's a very um, well-known term for a pointer plus a length. Do you know what it is? Oh yeah, it's a spam. Yeah, that's right, good. Okay, um, let's talk about the most commonly asked sorts of questions in interviews, C++ interviews, and that's like around virtual. Do you know what the virtual keyword is? Yeah, so that basically has to do with how uh, your functions would work when you're doing inheritance. Uh, so virtual means that I would pass it it would go through a virtual function table and uh, that means that if you're like calling something through a pointer, it will call it through the actual type rather than through, uh, I guess, the base class. The base class is time. Sometimes, so let's say we have two classes, A and B, and B inherits from A. A is known, and let's say we have an object, we knew an object on the heap of type B with a base class of A. So A pointer, Okay. A pointer variable name equals new B. Are you following along? Yes. Okay. And B is known as the blank type and A is known as the blank type. So A is the base type and B is the derived type. Yeah, right, but there's a you... there's a more specific term there. Like I'm not you're not gonna like get kicked out of an interview if you don't know it. But um, one so it, the I'll give you a hand. The one for B starts with the D. Yeah, somebody in chat already got it, but I don't want you reading chat. Uh, is it the? I'm not sure. Dynamic and static. Oh yeah. Okay. So do you know what a default parameter is? So basically, you have. I just a want to know a yes parameter. or no for this. For this one, I just want to know a yes or no. Yes. Okay. okay. So let's say I have A and B as before, and A has a virtual method called foo. Okay. Foo prints the number one. B overrides that and prints the number two. You following along so far? Okay, that's fine. Now I call foo on an object of dynamic type B through a pointer of static type A. What gets printed? Uh, 
let's take it a step back. Okay, let's say we take default parameters out of the equation. Okay, if I call foo on an object of type b, uh, b is printed. And if I call foo on an object of type a, a is printed. But now I have a object of type b via a pointer of type a. What is what is printed when I call foo? So two. Right. Okay. Now let's say now let's introduce default parameters. So. A's default is one, and B's uh, sorry. A's let's make it less confusing. A's default is A, the character A, and B's default is the character B. So when I call uh, foo on that same scenario, on a base class type of character A, but a dynamic type of sorry, a base class type of A and a dynamic type of B, what gets printed? Ooh, that's tricky. I think it's one, but uh, so I believe that it will actually go to a if there's defaults there that is right yeah good for you that's a question that a lot of people don't get so okay. if i have int x equals four y equals one and i do x plus 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 y i'm gonna post this in the chat we have on the gmeet i want you to tell me what the answer is Ooh. so i believe that would become x plus 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 a plus plus y because it takes the longest tries to make the things as long as possible right so x plus plus would become four and plus plus y would become two so it's four plus two is six so are you sure the answer is six hmm. so that's one two three four five pluses well, I don't think it would do any unary pluses there, so I think uh, I think that's the only way it could do is x plus plus, and then add that to plus plus y to get four plus two is six. Okay, it's not six. So this question is probably not a great interview question, but it tests a good part of like C plus plus theory crafting. It actually leads to comp compilation error. And that's due to the way that C++ parses tokens. So there's something called the maximal munch principle, which states that C++ will continue to parse, will, will parse as many tokens as it can until it like creates the largest running like valid token. So what's really going on there is it's, it's, it's parsing X++, that's one token. Then it's parsing the next two pluses together. And then the last term is plus Y. So the plus, the, the plus between two numbers isn't the, the middle plus, it's actually the last plus. Now, why is it a compilation error though? Do you know why? So let me break it down for you. So it's actually X plus plus, plus plus, plus Y. So that's what's actually being interpreted by C plus plus. So why is that a compilation error? That's like the follow-up question if you get the original question right. Because the plus plus isn't applied to anything. The plus plus is applied to something. So the plus plus is applied to the four, uh, the four, because x plus plus returns four, right? Even oh no, the second in... plus plus, right? The second plus this plus one... applies to four, but why does why does that lead? That's where the compilation error lies. Oh. And so my question is, why does the compilation error lie there? So what I'm getting at is, then what so happens the four is... is not the right type of value, right? Explain. That's, uh... uh, so it needs to be a r value, right? Well, it is an R value. Oh, no, R value is fine. It needs to be an L value for it to be able to increment it, right? That's right. Otherwise, yeah. it's... That's right. Okay. <coughs> yeah, uh, good job on that one. So, you got the follow You didn't get the original, but you did get the follow-up, which is kind of cool. Okay. Let's talk about probably the most commonly asked data structure that they're going to ask you to implement which in an interview, which is shared pointer. You're familiar with shared pointer, right? Uh, yes. So what is a shared pointer? Let's start there. So it's basically a pointer that keeps track of how many times it is referenced, right? And then it would delete, delete itself when it's not referenced by anything. Yeah. And how big is a shared pointer? on 64-bit architecture. So it would have to be like eight plus 412. So like using a regular integer for the uh, count of 
break it down where you got the 8 plus 4 from. So, 8 for the bear pointer that is, like, underlying it, and then 4 for the reference count. What do you mean sh the shared pointer that's underlying it? Because we're talking about a shared pointer. So. Oh, not a shared pointer, so just the regular pointer Raw that's pointer? underlying. Yeah, raw pointer. And then you said 4 bytes for the integer? Uh, yeah, so 32-bit integer is 4 bytes. That's well, no, wouldn't it be a size T instead of a... So wouldn't it be 8 plus 8, 16? You got the right <laughs> answer, but you didn't get the right... The right... <coughs> you got the right answer to get there, but you didn't get the right reasoning. So, so this is... This, this can even disqualify you in a C++ interview. So, what are the contents of a shared pointer? So you did say the object... Actually, you said the raw pointer, so the object that's being pointed to that's allocated on the heap. But there's a very key concept that's important to understand. That's the other part, the other eight. You said it's a size T, but it's not a size T. So is it, it's the reference count, but what is it? Yeah, there, you're uh, right, the reference count. The reference count is, the reference count is It wouldn't be a size in, T because it's not a no, size, no, The right? reference count is stored in a size T, but a shared pointer points to both the object and something else that contains the reference count. There's a name for it. It's very specific. It's not trivia. It's the one of the first things you read about when you read about a shared pointer. It's a... Uh, mm, I'm not sure what it's okay. called. Okay, that's that's a. If I like it when people say I'm not sure because then there's no you're not making yourself look strange. So uh, the control block. Have you heard of that term before? The control block. Uh. A little bit. Okay, the control block contains the reference count, and the control block is a pointer, so that's why it's 8. That's why you got the 16 right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Now let me ask you a little bit about pointers, because we're, ta we're talking about that. So let's say I have... What's the default type of a string literal? Let's start there. So if I have, like... If I have the word next, like this, what, what type is that? So that's const char star. Okay, yeah. Um, const char array, and that decays to const char star. So you're, I'd give you full points there, that's fine. Now, what if I had this, this code? So this would print the n. Okay. And what's your reasoning? And then I want to see what chats, well, actually before you say your reasoning, I'm interested to see what chat thinks. Good job there, okay. Like, so what, what version of Python do you use? The, dude, uh, you asked everybody that question. Uh, I think I use seven point, I have it written down in my book. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know, but it's a seven point, uh, do you mind waiting to, I mean like, okay, look, I, I have it written down. I, I don't wanna, yeah, seven, I don't wanna. It's fine, take your time, seven point what? Python seven okay. point what? All right, cool, no, no problem. To my notes, dude. I watch your stream, so like I knew you were gonna ask that question. No, it's good that you come prepared. 